A lot of people have loads of misconceptions about what it takes to actually get SSL in Rocket League. A lot of people think it takes thousands of hours to actually become an SSL in Rocket League. SSLs have a lot of different things going on in their lives. Like for me, I'm a top 28 1v1 player right now in the world. I got there on 20 hours in the past two weeks. It's a little bit over an hour a day. That's not a lot if you compare it to other players like pros who have 130 hours past two weeks. Slightly less hours than usual, but I'm still floating around. Um... I'm on 91 past two weeks, but that, that's like my lowest in a, in a while. You're slacking, man. Last time we talked, you were like 110, 120. I know, I know. I'm just saying this to put into perspective that your average casual player can still reach SSL while only playing for under an hour a day. The very first thing that I noticed is that they don't really have an intent or a purpose when they go into free play. I say in a lot of my videos, it's important to warm up before you go into games because once you're warm, that is the most consistent version of yourself. So it's the easiest way to grasp your improvement because if you're consistent and you're not just missing, you know, saves or shots out of consistency, that's your raw skill. Whereas if you're just not warm, it could just be that. So if you're warmed up, that's your base skill and it's very easy to gauge your improvement. But what I see a lot of people do is they'll go into free play and they'll open up YouTube or they'll watch Netflix while they're trying to warm up and you're really not gonna warm up well if you're not even focused on actually warming up. They're focused on the video or whatever they're doing on the side and their brain's kind of off, right? And they're not really actually thinking about, you know, warming up. They're just watching the video and they're just moving around. If you want to be as warm as possible and to play as good as possible in your session you're about to have, I really recommend devoting all of your attention and allocating everything in your mind to the free play session that you're having. Because first of all, it's important to be warmed up as well as you can. And second of all, it's important to see what your skill in free play actually looks like, what you're doing, how fast you can hit the ball, how fast you can read the ball. Because as time goes on, you're going to improve and you'll notice, okay, I can do this better than I could before but if you're not even paying attention none of that will happen and you're kind of missing out on a really good way to improve in Rocket League and when you're improving in Rocket League it's just going to change the quality of your gameplay in general which leads me to my second thing that SSLs do that most of you don't and that's having really high quality sessions a lot of people will play Rocket League for ranked for like six or seven or even eight hours at a time, which is absolutely insane to me. If you're playing for eight hours at a time, there's no way you're actively thinking about everything you should be because Rocket League is one of the most mind intensive games I've ever played. And I've played a lot of games and Rocket League, I can only play for maybe two hours max of ranked because there's just so many things that go into your head, especially if you're a really high rank, um, like as a top 100 1v1 player, when you're playing ranked, there is so many things like it's literally tiring to, you know, think about this for a long period of time and hats off to anyone that can play really well for a long period of time. That's genuinely impressive and comment down below if you can actually play for that long. But if you can, you're just a different breed. But for most people like me, I can only have this high of an attention span or at least focus really diligently for maybe three hours max. And that's even on the high end. Right now, I have 12 hours past two weeks. That's under an hour a day. And that's including my warm up too. I really don't play that much ranked. But when I do play ranked, it's very high quality. And I'm really trying to improve every time I play. And it's not just mindlessly queuing and then deranking. And this will honestly fix tilt cues, right? A lot of people, me, when I was a lower rank, I would just keep queuing and I would tilt because I would keep losing and then I would just blame my teammates and then I would just go straight downhill and I would lose like 200 MMR a session sometimes because I was just mad and I would just play just to play. I wasn't even actually thinking about improving and I was just blaming my teammate when in reality it was probably my fault. To my third thing that SSLs do that you don't, and that's the mental side of Rocket League, right? There's obviously your mechanics, your game sense, and then there's something that not so many people talk about, and that's the mentality behind things. When you lose a game and you blame your teammates, you're kind of just coping. You're, you kind of have the victim mentality, and it's different for everyone. Obviously, everyone has a different way of looking at Rocket League. But for me, I want to isolate myself as much as possible. Now, granted, I'm not the greatest 2v2 player. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a great teammate and I'm top 100 in 2v2 because I'm not. I'm only top 100 in 1v1 and I'm a peak GC3 
in 2v2, one MMR from SSL. But I honestly stopped playing 2v2 because it was getting to the point where my mind would just always go to my teammate. And objectively, I was better than all of my teammates, but I just wasn't a good teammate myself, despite me being better than everyone in the lobby. It's just hard for some people to take their teammates and take the uncontrolled variables out of the play. So what I did is I started to main 1v1. And what that did is I'm the only player that you know, actually has a say what happens in the game on my team in 1v1. There's no one else to blame, it's just me. So when I would lose, it really opened up my eyes. Okay, this was my fault, right? It's no one else's fault but mine. There was no other teammate. I'm not lagging, there's nothing going on, it's just me. And that's why a lot of people get mad playing 1v1 is because a lot of the times these same players are the players that will blame their teammates in 2v2 and it's really hard for them to accept the reality that they just aren't as good as they want to be or as good as they think they are and it's just an ego thing and in rocket league you need to take your ego out i mean i have way less of an ego than some champs i know and i'm way better than them and that's not having an ego there's just some objective things in Rocket League by watching replays. And there's people that just think they're so much better than they are and they'll just blame their teammates. And my advice to those people would just be to play 1v1 or to actually watch the 2v2 games and objectively look at it as if you're just a random viewer and see, okay, what actually happened and overanalyze and have analysis paralysis is what I like to call it, where you overanalyze every situation. And yeah, I would argue that Mental is a really important side of Rocket League as well that people just overlook. And I mean, yeah, that's all I have in this video. If this video was helpful at all, please be sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me lately. We also have a Discord server where I talk to a lot of my members. I'll give them tips. You guys can just DM me or whatever over there. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.